Hello everyone, it's Jay here. I hope you're all doing fantastic today and I thank you all so much for joining me. Uh, today I'll be showing you how to take your audio tracks and make them lo-fi. Now, why would you want to do this? You spend all your time making your track sound high quality in the context of a mix, and now we're going to make it lo-fi. Well, in this case, I'm going to be using it as a way to transition this drum part here to the rest of this loop. And for that to make any sense, we're going to have to play it, um, and then we'll go into how we're going to do that. Um, now, while you're watching this, keep in mind that you can apply this to pretty much any instrument you want. You can do this on guitar or keyboards or maybe even vocals. Uh, really, just take whatever you can learn from this video and apply it to whatever you want and make it your own original thing. So in this case, we are going to be doing the drums, though. So I'm just going to play this loop, and uh, here we go. Okay, very cool. So as I said in this tutorial, we're going to be affecting the drums. So the first technique for making your tracks lo-fi is by using EQ. Now if you're following along in Logic Pro X, you can just double click over here to bring up the channel EQ. If you're in a different DAW, you can still use whatever EQ that comes with it, or really any EQ plugin, um, as long as your DAW has automation, because that's going to be part of this technique. So we're going to be using the filters, uh, specifically the high pass and low pass, and we are going to find a happy medium where you can still hear the fundamental of the kick and the, uh, the low mids of the snare, so the drum kit is still recognizable, but obviously it sounds a little bit muffled and lo-fi, hence the term. Uh, so we're going to play this in context, and I'm actually going to change the loop uh, to be just this intro part, because that's all we're going to have uh, for now. This is where it's going to be full quality, and this is where it's going to be lo-fi. So let's play around and see if we can get a good sound. Okay, so I actually kind of guessed it pretty fast and had it in just about the right place. There's just enough high end that it's still recognizable, you can still feel the beat, but it definitely is lo-fi. Now, if you notice right now, this is static, so this next part... you're still going to have your lo-fi drums. So what we want to happen is we want this area, this bar, we want this EQ to slowly fade away. Now, the best way to do this is with automation. So we're going to click automation here, or A, on your keyboard, and we are going to go over, we're going to hold, your, hold down your left click and go over to channel EQ, and then your high cut frequency. So we have that selected, and then we're going to click right here to get a point, and then drag over here and drag this down, or up, sorry, so it goes up to 20,000. So your high cut is at 20,000 kilohertz, which is um, no more high cut applied. Uh, then we're going to go back over here and go to the low cut frequency, uh, which is here, and do the same thing. Go over here with your marker and get it all lined up, and then make sure this goes to 20. So now, essentially what's happening, you can actually look, which is really cool, I think, you can see in real time how this opens up. So let's see what this sounds like. So there you go, lo-fi drums transitioning into hi-fi. Very, very cool. Okay, so that's the first way to do it. Another way to do it is by using a Logic-specific plugin called the Bit Crusher. Now, there are plugins that are similar to this. You can look it up for whatever DAW you have, but essentially, it, it affects the waveform and, well, it bit crushes it. So, as you can see, I went over to Distortion and Bit Crusher. And I chose stereo because this happens to be a stereo drum track. You might be applying this if you have acoustic drums uh, to a drum bus or something similar. But in this case, it's stereo and it is right on the uh, consolidated drum track. So if I play here... 
you'll hear that it's modifying the sound. Now, what we're going to do is I'm going to go to, let's try fold, and I'm going to change the down sampling. And this is going to sound really weird, but I'm going to change the down sampling until the resonance is the key of the song. Now, listen to when I down sample, and you'll hear it starts to take on a note. Okay, so I took a mental note that a down sampling of 30 was, I don't think it's the actual key of the song, but it's, um, it sounds like it fits with the song. Or maybe not, but it sounds kind of cool. So whatever. Um, down sampling, essentially, it's, um, it's making it more jagged and it's adding aliasing to your sine wave. So that's why it sounds the way it does. Um, now, I'm going to change the resolution to 24-bit, which is the same as the project, um, simply because when, um, when I'm automating, I can just simply automate the downsampling, and when the downsampling is set to 1, basically it's um, almost as if the plugin is off. It's actually adding a bit of drive, so I could take that off and then downsample, and then when I get back to 0, it'll be completely dry. As you can hear. So anyway, we're going to set this to 30 and we're going to do something very similar to what we did before. Once again, we're going to press A to bring up our automation. We're going to go over to Bit Crusher and we're going to go to Downsampling, go to 3, pick this right here, and then actually, you know, sorry, this is supposed to be on 4, and then 5, and bring this down. And we get this. And I think that's pretty interesting, um, especially when it transitions like this. And of course, you can experiment as well with uh, the clip mode and the wrap mode. And you can also, um, you can play with the resolution as well if you want. And just use the same technique to, um, to automate it. You just go straight here and go to your bit crusher and you can change all the kind of things that you want and translate it all the way back to the dry signal. So there you go, that's the second way to do it. Okay, so on to the last technique, and this one's probably my favorite too because we're gonna be using an amp simulator and this makes for a very cool sound. Uh, now, I'm using Logic's Amp Designer, so once again, if you're following in a different DAW and you don't have a built-in Amp Designer, um, or sorry, Amp Simulator, uh, there is one you can get for free, and I'll link it in the description. It's called Amplitube, and it's, uh, it's technically, it is something that you can pay for, and you can get a full version. It's great. I don't have the full version, though, uh, because the free version comes with three amps, and that's really all I use. And it's, uh, it's great if you don't have something like this. But anyway, if you do have Logic, just pull up the default. I find the default setting works the best. Although one tweak I will be making is I'll be uh, using the Royer 121. And I'm going to move this a bit to the right. Because you'll notice if I play it here, it's a bit harsh on the higher frequencies. And we don't want that. So I'm going to move it over here and we're going to get this. Now, this on its own, I think, is a very usable sound, and I might even like it the whole way through. Maybe not with the, the amount of hi-hat in there, but um, instead of doing like a transitionary thing, this is something that can actually shape your um, whole drum sound. But if you do want to do the same thing we've been doing this whole tutorial, where it shuts off here, um, you actually need to go to your uh, main, and then insert one bypass, or whichever one you have it on, one, two, or three, because we can't shut off the plugin from the inside. So I'm going to go to uh, five right here, measure five, and drag up and bypass it. So we're gonna get the same thing. I'm actually gonna go a little bit in between here so you can see it switches in between a drum hit. So we'll get this.
So there you go. It's a really cool effect and lo-fi tracks can really help bring out a lot of energy in your mixes and they can really add suspense and uh, they're just great everywhere. Definitely, like I said in the beginning, try this on different instruments, try this in different places of your mix and really just experiment because, you know, as a musician, you want to be original, you want to be creative and ultimately you want to stand out and make great music. So I hope this helped. If you like this video, please leave a like. If you have any questions, leave a comment. And as always, thank you all so much for watching. Take care, guys.